Okay, so let's have a look at resolving our forces if our particle is on an inclined plane. All right, if we just come across and have a look at our, our general scenario over here on the right. All right. So we know that, okay, in, in this instance, we might have a, a pulling force or a pushing force up the plane, which is our force up the plane here. We've got our weight force, which acts with gravity, so vertically down, mg. We've got the reaction force, which acts perpendicular to the plane, R. All right, so they're really the three, the three forces. We may have friction acting down the plane or in the direction opposite motion, but it's this weight force here, mg, that I want to have a look at. All right, so the directions that we aim to resolve our forces when we're on an inclined plane are parallel and perpendicular to the inclined plane. So my I component, okay, parallel to the plane, my J component perpendicular to the plane, which means I want all my forces acting parallel and perpendicular to the plane. The only one that's not doing that at the moment is this weight force MG. All right. So if we do a little bit of trig magic, so let's have a look. So theta is my inclined plane. So maybe if I should get rid of some of that. So theta is my angle. There's my right angle here. Okay, which means the little angle up here in the top right corner is 90 minus theta, which means on the other side of that is the same angle theta. So that same angle theta here with the little yellow star. All right, if we work with that, I've got, if I bring it out a bit, that's mg, that's theta, which means this component here, okay, is mg cos theta. This component here is mg sine theta. So the mg sine theta component is that WF, the weight force acting down the plane. mg cos theta, okay, it's the force that's acting vertically opposite the reaction force. So this weight force here will always be mg sine theta, okay? So we don't have to derive it every time. We just have to know that that's the component of the force of the weight force that's acting down the plane. mg cos theta is the component of the weight force that's acting perpendicular to the plane, all right? So in terms of resolving my forces, some of the forces is equal to ma in the i direction. I've got F acting up the plane, I've got mg sine theta acting down the plane, and that's equal to ma, okay? The sum of the forces is equal to ma, all right? In the j direction, I've got my reaction force acting vertically opposite, upwards, away from the plane, and I've got mg cos theta acting vertically opposite downwards, okay? Or perpendicular to the plane. So R is going to be mg cos theta, all right? So that's how we can resolve that weight force. So that's how we resolve our forces when we're looking at an inclined plane. Everything is parallel to and perpendicular to the plane. So if we have a look at this particular example, get my highlighter. All right, particle of mass 20 lies on a smooth plane, so there's no friction, inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Show the forces acting on the body. All right, so it's just lying there. So we've got the reaction force, so everything in yellow, my weight force acting vertically down, reaction force acting perpendicular to the plane, and they're those forces. Then we've just got the component of the weight force, mg sine theta, that's acting down the plane, the component of the weight force that's acting perpendicular to the plane, all right, mg cos theta. So if I resolve my forces now, the sum of the forces is equal to ma, always. So what forces do I have? Well, I've just got mg sine theta acting down the plane equal to 20a. All right, so in this case, since there's no other forces, I'm sort of making positive down the plane, so I've left it as a positive mg sine theta. Mass is 20, angle is 30. The J component, R is equal to mg cos theta. They're the only forces acting perpendicular to the plane.
Right? Now, because there's no friction, it's the I component that really is all I'm interested in. So if I simplify that expression, sine theta is a half, sine of 30 is a half, I should say. So I get 10G is equal to 20A, so the acceleration is equal to G on 2. All right? From the reaction force, okay, um, R is just equal to 20G times cos of 30, which is root 3 on 2, so we get 10 root 3G. That becomes significant when we start looking if we have friction. Friction is equal to, oh, sorry, mu R is equal to friction. And that's when the result or the reaction force becomes significant. All right, let's have a go at another one. Okay. Right, a slope is inclined at an angle, theta to the horizontal, where tan theta is equal to four thirds, a particle ejected from the foot of the slope up the line of greater slope with a speed of V meters per second, it comes instantaneously to rest after traveling six meters. If the coefficient of friction between the particle and the slope is a half, calculate the value of V. All right, first things first. Okay, so let's put together all the forces that are in play. So we draw our diagram. It's the same diagram that I had previously. So let's just highlight the key components. Um, all right, so we've got our angle. We've got weight force acting vertically down, resultant force acting up, uh, mg sine theta acting down the plane. Okay, mg cos theta acting perpendicular to the plane. Um, we have zero force acting up the plane, okay? Um, I've got friction acting down the plane. So let's define the I direction as being up the plane, the J direction as being perpendicular to the plane, and we'll make positive up. Uh -huh. So the I components, what have we got for the I components? We know the sum of the forces is equal to MA, always. So I've got zero force acting up the plane, I've got mg sine theta acting down the plane. I've got friction acting down the plane. So I'm subtracting those. All of those forces is equal to ma. In the j direction, I've got the reaction force acting away from the plane. And I've got mg cos theta acting in the opposite direction. So r minus mg cos theta is equal to zero because there's no motion off the plane. Okay, so there's no J direction motion. So if I rearrange that, I get R is equal to mg cos theta. Now, let's think about the sine theta and cos theta. I know that tan theta, over here on the right, tan theta is um, opposite over adjacent, which means if I use some Pythag, I get a three, four, five triangle. So if I use that, that means sine theta is equal to four fifths, cos theta is equal to three fifths. Okay, so instead of mucking around and getting an angle of you know, 57 degrees and four minutes or whatever it is, just use sine theta and cos theta. So now, come back over here to R. R is equal to mg cos theta. Cos theta is three fifths, so mg times three fifths is just three mg on five. So there's my reactionary force all right, from J. Let's go to the I component. I've got MA, because that's what the sum of the forces is equal to, is equal to negative MG sine theta. So there's my negative MG sine theta here, where sine theta is four fifths. Friction is minus mu R and R is equal to mg times, well, 3mg on 5. So it's negative a half, which is my coefficient of friction, times the R value, which is 3mg on 5, minus 4mg on 5. So just get a common denominator. MA is equal to negative 11mg on 10. So divide both sides by M, I get negative 11g on 10, which I might leave like that for now. Okay. Um, you could put a a decimal equivalent. Right. So the value of V, I need my v initial velocity. Capital V is the initial velocity. So I know that V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Um, 
Now, in this instance, the final velocity is zero. My initial velocity is what I'm looking for. And acceleration I've worked out. And S is, we were told, six metres. So if I put all that information in, I get V is 11.37, positive, so it's up the plane. So if you like, the initial velocity is 11.37 metres per second. What's the speed of the particle when it returns to its starting point? So what does that mean to happen? So it means that my particle has been shot up the plane after six metres, the, the slope and the friction has reduced its motion to zero, and then it starts sliding down the plane. Right. So what does that diagram look like? So let's come over to B. So we're now got motion down the plane. So motion is now direction of motion is down the plane. So I've got mg sine theta acting down the plane still. I've still got my mg cos theta and r hasn't changed. mg sine theta acting down the plane. This time friction is acting up the plane because it's in the opposite direction to motion. All right. So once again, we resolve our forces. So we've got our diagram here. So what about, what's my I component? There's, there's my I, I component here. Let's move that. Um, so I've got mg sine theta down the plane minus friction up the plane is equal to ma. Sum of the forces is equal to ma. That's what this line is. Sum of the forces is equal to ma. All right. In the J direction, I've still got R is equal to mg cos theta, where, um, again, just remember our cos theta is three-fifths and sine theta is four-three-fifths. Cos theta is equal to, what did I say? Three-fifths, sine theta is equal to four-fifths. Um, so I component... I've got mg sine theta, which is four fifths, minus friction, which is a half mu, which is equal to mu r, okay, which is equal to again that half mg times three fifths equals ma. So get those together, and this time I get a is equal to g on two. Okay, we can make down the plane as positive. Um, so now what have we got in terms of my um, kinematics and my conditions? So I'm starting from rest. So initially, U is, U is equal to zero. A is equal to G on two. Final velocities, I don't know. And the distance is six metres again, because we're getting back to our starting point. So V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. V squared is equal to 2 times G on 2 times 6. So V squared is equal to 6G. So the square root of 6G is 7.67 metres per second. Now, down the plane, negative, as long as you identify the direction of the motion. All right. Okay. There's a bit in that. Let's take your time and see how you go.